Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Clint Steele. We're going to get started here in just one minute. I want to welcome everyone to uh, to the workshop. Uh, if you could just in the um, there should be to the right of you a chat section. If you can tell me where you're where you're listening from or where you're watching from, uh, I would appreciate it. Just so I have an idea of of uh, where everyone is coming from. And we're going to get rolling. So crazy times we live in right now, as, uh, as everyone is experiencing. Uh, more important than ever right now for everyone to take care of themselves, take care of their health, take care of their, especially their immune system right now. And so we're going to be discussing seven ways, proven, proven researched back free ways uh, that you can reduce your stress levels and strengthen your immune system starting right now, as soon as this is done. Uh, so I want to welcome you. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I want to start off with a story. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm in Maine. Um, and I don't know if you heard about it, but there was a family here uh, that just recently inherited a $100 million. It was big news around here. You may not have heard about it in your area, but uh, this family is, is from northern Maine, potato farmers. They live in a small, small town. And a lot of people from northern Maine rarely even leave the state, let alone their, uh, their, their county, their local town. And so they had never been out of the state, never, never been to a, a town with a population more than 2,000 people. And they had never been to a building that was higher than two floors. Kind of crazy in today's time, I, I know. And so they, they inherited this money and they decided they were going to go to New York City of all places. Everyone kept telling them that you need to go to New York City. You got to go check it out. It's amazing down there. And so they decided to go down to New York, New York City. And of course, this was before this was before coronavirus. Uh, and so they were walking around in amazement. I mean, and just lifting their heads, looking at all the tall buildings. And so this family of four, mom, dad, daughter and son walking around. Uh, the son and the, the father decide to go into one of the buildings. And as they walk into the building, uh, they see this uh, lady, about 75, 80, 85 years old, gray hair, cane, standing next to the wall. And as she's looking at the wall, uh, there's a button on the wall she pushes. And as soon as she pushed it, this light turned on. And all of a sudden, the wall opened up. Like it totally opened up. She walked into the wall and the wall closes. And the son and the dad are looking at each other like, what just happened? About 30 seconds later, the wall opens back up and out walks this 30 year old, beautiful, attractive young lady, no cane, you know, great health. She walks out and the son looks at the dad and says, what just happened, dad? And the dad said, I don't know, but hurry up and go find your mom because we need to get her into that wall, right? For those of, for those of you listening, it's a, it's a funny joke, right? It, it's funny. And, and the reason I share that with you, a couple of reasons I share that with you. Uh, number one, fun and humor helps to reduce stress levels and improve health, increase, increase uh, immune st system strength. Uh, but the other reason I share this with you, more importantly, is because just like that family, has no idea what an elevator is. Uh, they have, they, you know, you, they've never been around an elevator. Now, in today's society, obviously, that's that's probably not not possible. But uh, the reason I point this out is because the information I'm about to share with you uh, is possibly similar to that family and the elevator. Uh, you you may be hearing information in in the next in the next few minutes that you may never have heard of before. It may be new to you. It may be something that your medical doctors never told you about. It may be something that the pharmaceutical companies have never told you about. You've never seen advertisements on this stuff. Uh, but just because you've never heard about it doesn't mean it's, it's not effective. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. Uh, it just means you haven't heard about it. So I'm going to ask you to keep an open mind. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to ask, your, ask you to ask yourself, does this make sense? You know, does this all make sense? Because 
I've been a chiropractor now for 26 years. Uh, I've been in the health and wellness industry for, for over, for almost 30 years. And time and time again, I come across, come across people who tell me they had no idea that the information that I'm sharing with them is, is, is valid. Like, like they've never heard this information before. And so again, they say to me oftentimes, and this is not only lay people, but this is oftentimes nurses, uh, sometimes medical doctors, you know, at the end of this, they'll say, wow, that makes so much sense. Like, why didn't anyone ever tell me this information before? And so I'm going to ask you at the end of this, if this makes sense. And if it does, then there's going to op be an opportunity for you to act on it. So first, before we get into this, uh, I want to ask you uh, what you think of our healthcare system. Most people that I speak to, especially in the United States, agree that our, our health care system is broken. And in fact, a lot of people uh, believe we don't really have a health care system. We have more of a what's called a, a sick care system. So in today's society, the, the way our, our health care, our sick care system works is, is people are taught to wait until they have symptoms, right? And then as soon as they have symptoms, what do they do? They, they, they're taught to go to the doctor, call the doctor, go see the doctor. And what do they get when they see the doctor? They get a prescription. So my question to you is, what does that prescription actually do? And I want you to think about this really hard because if you ask yourself, what does this, what does this prescription really do? Does it really fix the cause of whatever is at, 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 the, at the base of your symptoms is, is it really fixing the cause or is it just covering it up because more than likely if you think about this you'll understand and, and you'll come to the agreement that most medications just cover up symptoms they don't really fix the cause it's similar to and in the analogy here we've got a picture of an automobile down there in the lower left it's similar to driving around in a car and your check engine light comes on so most people, when their check engine light comes on, they would then take it to a mechanic to find out what's causing the issue. What is causing the check engine light to come on? Because that's what we want to fix. You wouldn't drive around, continue to drive around with your hand over the check engine light and continue to drive your car. Because what would happen? Car one, at some point, it's not going to run, right? Uh, at some point, there's going to, there's going to, uh, other problems are going to be created. And it's going to get to the point where eventually your car is not going to run. And that's basically the same thing that happens when you, when you take a medication for your, for your health care issues. You're, you're, you're covering it up uh, with, with your hand saying, well, you know, I've, I've, I've got this covered up. I don't, see the, I don't see the check engine light anymore. I don't feel the check engine light anymore. So I must be healthy. And the truth is it's not. It, it's creating more problems that will eventually turn into more symptoms and eventually lead you down this path that most people don't want to go. So I'm going to ask you if we can take a step back and treat our health similar to how we would treat our car. So let me, let me share some facts with you here just to kind of prove my point. The United States right now consumes about 65% of the world's medications. Now, we only take up 6% of the world's population, 6%, and yet we consume 65% of the world's medications. According to the World Health Organization, now, now if medications were the answer, medications were the solution, that, that should mean that as a, as a nation, we should be the healthiest nation in the world, bar none. Like, like no, no nation should even come close to us, right, if, if medications were the answer. But the truth is, according to the World Health Organization, uh, we rank dead last among industrialized na nations in many areas when it comes to health. Dead last. Like that, that's unacceptable. You know, if, that was, if, if this was the Olympics and we, we, we finished last in our medal counts, what would happen? You, you know, the United States would like, everything would, would change so that our athletes were, were able to finish first or second or third, and, and, and we, wouldn't, we wouldn't finish dead last. Same thing with our health. Why aren't we changing this?
Here's some additional information from uh, National, uh, National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Uh, right now, in two, well, in 2015, 2016, almost, 40, almost 46 percent of the U U.S. population had used prescription medications in the last 30 days. Over 50 percent of our seniors over the age of 85 have Alzheimer's. Prescription drug use, 18 percent of children under the age of 12 use prescription medication. Okay, are on a prescription medication. 85% of adults age 60 and over are on a prescription medication. Again, going back to the World Health Organization, we rank dead last amongst industrialized nations in numerous categories of health. Obviously, our, our healthcare system is broken. So I want to present to you a solution, a, a new way. And I call it, I'm a chiropractor, so I call it the chiropractic lifestyle. A lot of people, when they think of chiropractors, they think chiropractic, they think neck and low back pain. And the truth is, chiropractic is actually about a healthy brain and nervous system. The first chiropractic adjustment over 100 years ago uh, was actually performed on a gentleman who lost his hearing. An adjustment was performed and his hearing was restored. That was the first chiropractic adjustment over 100 years ago. It had nothing to do with neck or low back pain. Chiropractic has to do with a healthy brain and a healthy functioning nervous system. And the reason that's so important is because if I ask you what controls every system and every function in your entire body, I can ask a third grader and they're going to come back and say, well, my brain. And the answer is yes, your brain. And so I'm going to ask you, if, if your brain controls every system, every function, every cell in your entire body, does that include Things like your circulatory system. Well, the answer's got to be yes, right? How about your respiratory system? Again, the answer has to be yes. How about your reproductive system? Again, yes. How about your immune system? And the answer again is yes. Chiropractors have been stating this for over 100 years that your immune system is controlled and coordinated by your nervous system. And, and research has, has proven that for the last 20 years. So the way this works is your brain sends signals to every part of your body through the nervous system. As long as you have a healthy brain and nervous system, everything should be good, right? Well, here's the problem. The problem is that due to life, and especially the life we live in right now, we have these things called stressors or stress that places uh, stress to our brain and our nervous system. So let me, let me share with you what chiropractors call the three T's. These, these are three of the major stressors in life. Now I'm going to go over these in detail, and then we're going to get to the, uh, to the seven things you can do to help improve your immune system function and also improve your health. So these three major stressors, chiropractors call the three T's. Uh, the first one is thoughts. So that's emotional stress. Most people, when they think about stress, they think emotional stress. Now, that's obviously true. But in addition, we also have two other forms of stress. So we have physical stress, what chiropractors call trauma. And I'm going to go over these in detail here in just one second. And we also have toxins or what we call chemical stress. Now, stress affects our brains and our, and our nervous system's ability to adapt to our environment. And so it starts a path that leads down this road to disease. And so once you're on this path, it's very easy for your nervous system and your brain to continue down this path. It's almost like developing a pattern. And it, and it sets up this pattern. And once this pattern is, is developed, it can be hard to break because that's the natural path that you want to take. So again, going back to the three stressors, we got thoughts. So these are, these are things that, that are going through your head, okay? Whether it's, you know, being on time for your, for your meeting, uh, whether it's financial stress, whether it's relationship stress. In addition, we've got trauma. Most people think about trauma, they think of like car accidents, they think of falls, uh, but there's also repetitive motion trauma. So staring at phones all day long or sitting in front of a computer all day long, or, or right now, especially, you know, people sitting around on the couch watching Netflix all day long. 
Uh, so not moving your body properly is, is traumatic. In addition, we've got toxins, chemical stress, so things like what are you putting in your mouth? What, do, what are you eating on a regular basis? What are you putting on your skin? Uh, what are you using for, uh, if I had any, if you can see, uh, you know, I used to use shampoo, shampoo a long time ago. Uh, there's a lot of toxins in shampoo and, and lotions. Uh, so we need to be careful on the, on the amount of toxins we're putting into our body. So uh, let me explain how this nervous system works and then, and then we'll get more into the stress and the things that we can do. Uh, your nervous system basically for the, for the sake of this discussion has two parts. One is called your sympathetic nervous system. So uh, we see a lady over there, you know, uh, next to the fire alarm. If I were to ask you, you know, as you watch this, if a fire alarm went off in the building that you're watching this, or you had a smoke alarm that, that went off, how would your brain react to that? Whether it's, whether it's a really a fire or whether it's just a test, either way, your body's going to react. Your brain is going to send messages to your body so that you can react to that fire alarm, okay, to that potential threat to your body. And so what would happen is more energy would go to your heart. Your, your heart would beat faster to push blood out. Your lungs would work harder so that you could breathe more oxygen, so you could, you could escape. Uh, more energy and more messages are going to go to your muscles, so they'll be stronger, right? And less energy at that point, I think you would agree, less energy at that point or less communication at that point would go to digesting your food. Because if you're trying to escape a burning building, your, your, your body doesn't have to worry about digestion, right? It doesn't have to worry about reproduction. It, it doesn't even have to worry about your immune system. Uh, because again, you don't have to worry about your immune system while you're trying to escape a burning building. So this is all called fight or flight. A lot of people have heard of this, fight or flight. And again, it's the part of the nervous system uh, that we call the sympathetic nervous system. Then on the other hand, the other part of the nervous system uh, is called your parasympathetic nervous system. It's your rest and digest part or your healing part of your nervous system. So again, if I were to ask you, if you were at home, lying down, you were very relaxed, uh, you know, very peaceful, almost to the point where you, you were about to fall asleep, just, just really, really relaxed. Would your brain react differently in that scenario as compared to when the fire alarm went off? Chances are you're going to say yes, absolutely. You see, during this process of relaxation, of rest and digest, now you have more communication, you have more, uh, more energy going to your digestive organs, you have more communication going to your reproductive organs, and you have more communication even going to your immune system. So again, this is called your rest and digest, or also known as your parasympathetic nervous system. So <coughs> Excuse me. We need both of those parts of your nervous system. However, most people today, due to especially right now, due to the stressors of life, are in what we call fight or flight or sympathetic state. And so this becomes, as I said earlier, a pattern. And when it becomes a pattern for too long, it's very hard to shut off. Your body automatically goes down that. And so the way I, I, I sh I compare it to, it's kind of like this car down here driving down the street. If you're driving to work, you drive to work the same way every single day, right? It becomes a pattern. It's almost like you can do that in your sleep. But what happens one day when all of a sudden that road is closed or one of the roads is closed? And now what happens? You have to consciously think about how to change that pattern. You have to force yourself to adapt. You see, this is the same thing that happens with our brain and our nervous system. We are forced on a day-to-day -day basis to adapt. Right now, uh, we're forced to adapt to the situation with coronavirus, right? Um, our nervous system should be adapting to being able to be strong, to be able to fight off a virus. However, if we're stuck in a sympathetic state, if we're stuck in fight or flight, we have less ability to adapt to our environment less ability to adapt to what's going on around us. So this also leads then to disease processes, okay? And so that's what we're gonna talk about is creating new patterns, which ultimately is the solution. You see, because during a time like this, especially we need our immune system to be nice and strong to fight off coronavirus or 
outside of this event right now, like after this is done, we still need a strong immune system to fight off bacteria, to, to fight off cancer, and, and we need it to do its job as well as it should. We also need to be able to digest our food, right? We can't do it as well as we should when we're, when we're stuck in a, in a sympathetic pattern. We possibly, depending on your age, you may have already gone through this, but uh, we're seeing a lot of people today that are having a hard time conceiving, having a hard time having children. And so obviously we want our reproductive system to work like it should. When we're in a sympathetic state, we can't do that. So what we need to do is break that pattern. We need to create a new pattern. And we do that through our lifestyle, through changing our lifestyle to allow our nervous system to, to, to be better able to adapt to our environment. And so this starts uh, with something we call the chiropractic adjustment. And again, we're going to go over to the other seven areas uh, real quick, but I, I, need to, I need to share a little bit more about chiropractic because so many people think that chiropractic is about neck pain and low back pain. When chiropractic is actually about reducing stress on your brain and nervous system, allowing your body to function better. So this is, a, this is a, several studies that have been done. There's, there's many, many more, uh, but I want to just share with you. Back, and this goes back to 1991 showed that a chiropractic adjustment, 15 minutes following a chiropractic adjustment, actually increased what are called neutrophil counts. Neutrophils are part of your immune system. Okay, go out and engulf, engulf bacteria or a virus and, and kill it off so you can get rid of it. Okay, another study in 2011 showed a reduction in cortisol levels. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone. Uh, we need that to be able to escape our burning building, but we don't need that or want that on a daily basis. And so what's happening today is more people have high stress levels, high cortisol levels, which are causing damage to the body, leading to uh, chronic disease processes. So again, going back to the study in 2011, uh, very clearly showed a reduction, meaning uh, a, a reduced stress levels uh, based on cortisol levels following a chiropractic adjustment. In addition, several studies have shown that a chiropractic adjustment improves HRV. HRV is heart rate variability. Now, poor HRV is shown to be a factor in things like cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, dementia, uh, immune system strength, and more and more. So chiropractic has shown to be able to improve HRV levels. Very, very important. And then uh, the last study there, uh, was a study um, that actually took uh, HIV patients and they tested them after they were adjusted and it showed that they had a 48% increase in CD4 counts. CD4 counts, again, uh, help measure your immune system function, okay? So very important. Uh, chances are the chiropractor who, sh who, who invited you here uh, would like to talk to you more about this. We'll get into that at the, at the end of this presentation, but uh, I just needed to make sure that everyone knew about the importance of regular chiropractic adjustments. What we're going to move on to now is the three T's. We talked about this earlier. Again, thoughts, toxins, and trauma. Okay. So, for example, thoughts. Let's just let's just talk about thoughts. Um, you know, when we think of thoughts, what, what's going inside your head? How do you feel about, for example, your financial situation? How do you feel about your relationship? What are the thoughts you're having around these areas of your life? How do you feel when you're running late? How do you feel right now about what's going on with coronavirus? Are you stressed? Are you, are you thinking negative thoughts? Because that creates not only high cortisol levels, high stress levels, but also decreases your immune system strength. So for example, a study in 1984, uh, they took 75 first year medical students and measured their immune system strength one month prior to final exams. And then they did it again during final exams. And they showed the results showed that they had a weaker immune system during final exams because of the stress of these exams. So some things that we can do. Number one, so, so one of the first things that we can do of the, of the seven free ways that we can reduce our stress levels and we can increase our immune system strength is change your thoughts. Change your thoughts. Now, it might be easier said than done, but you can do it, okay? And for those of you watching, we have a, we have a system set up. We're going we're gonna to present to you at the, at the end of this, an opportunity for you if you're interested in this system, where we give you a, a mindset exercise that you can do every single day 
to help improve your thoughts. So what you want to do is you want to stop negativity, number one. Anytime you get a negative thought, there are certain ways to break that pattern. And again, the chiropractor that, that sent you here can help you work on those. In addition, you want to start reading motivational things or watching motivational things. Okay? Uh, stop watching the news. Stop, stop on social media. You know, anytime you come across a negative post, like, like just skip over it. Stop. Start putting positivity into your mind. Surround yourself with positive people. This is very important as well, whether it's online or whether it's in person. Obviously, right now we have social distancing going on, so more than likely that's going to happen during uh, or online. But uh, even, even your family, like if, if, you, if you're in, in the house with your family and they're being negative, you know, just have a talk with them. Say, listen, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be around the negativity. Let's, let's change it up. You can keep a gratitude journal. Write in it every day. Gratitude journal. There's all kinds of research out there showing how uh, grateful people are, people are less likely to get sick. They're less, less likely to be depressed. Uh, they're less likely to have um, medical problems. So let's start looking for things that we can be grateful for. And again, there's many additional ways to do that. We have a program available for you. Uh, if you want, we have a mindset exercise, a different one every single week. And you perform these exercises three to four minutes every single day. It'll totally change your thoughts and, and your, your mindset. Uh, the second thing we're going to talk about is toxins. What are you putting into your body? Just for an example, how much sugar do you eat each, each day? Okay. How many preservatives are you putting into your body? Okay. If you're eating prepackaged meals, more than likely there's tons of preservatives in there. There's lots of salt. There's more than likely there's added sugar. Okay. Let's look at this study. A study was carried out to observe how simple carbohydrates uh, such as sugar decreased what's called phagocytic capacity of neutrophils, meaning, again, your white blood cell count, which is your, your immune system, part of your immune system, uh, it decreased specific cells in there that help kill off things like viruses after eating sugar. So let's stop the sugar, okay? How about alcohol as well? I know a lot of people right now, you know, they're sitting around at home, not, not a lot to do. At night, they're, they're drinking a little bit more than usual. This is affecting your immune system strength, okay, and, and, and the health of your body as well. You want to increase the amount of fruits and vegetables you're taking in. Very, very important. There was a study done in 2017 uh, that, that uh, went back to uh, 2013, showed that 8 million people died prematurely in the year 2013 due to lack of consumed high nutrient foods like those of fruits and vegetables. Very, very important that we get high nutrient dense foods. And again, everyone is specific. Everyone is different. So again, speak to the chiropractor who sent you here, or if, if no one sent you here, or if you just saw it on a Facebook post and you don't have a chiropractor, you can contact me. We've got programs available where we can put you on uh, specific meal plans that are high nutrient meal plans that include uh, not only recipes, but also shopping lists. Make it very easy uh, to figure out your, your meal plans for the week. Trauma. This is what we're talking about, physical stress. Okay? Are you moving your body? Setting for long periods of time has been called the new smoking due to, due to increased health risks. Uh, numerous experts have stated that this is from the University of, of Nebraska Lincoln uh, it says prolonged setting sedentary or prolonged sedentary time in other words setting around was independently associated with deleterious health outcomes this is a study in 2015 annals of internal medicine research article after research article after research article shows that setting around too long Sitting at a desk eight hours a day, staring at your phones all day is traumatic to your body and it, and it creates chronic disease processes. And it also affects your immune system. So uh, going back to studies showing that uh, exercise, and it has to be the right exercise, folks. Uh, if you're watching this again, depending on your age, depending on your, uh, your, uh, um, your health right now, the, this, this has to be specific for you. Uh, but going back to the study, a clinical sport medicine study showed overall in healthy older adults 
Regular, particularly aerobic exercise appears to be a friend of the immune system, helping to offset diminished adaptive responses and chronic inflammation. Okay, again, very, very important. And folks, most people, when they think of exercise, they think of cardiovascular exercise. It's really important that you get five components in every single workout, and that includes strength, that includes cardiovascular, heart health. It also includes balance. Balance work, agility work, which is coordination, and also flexibility, okay? And so again, your chiropractor who sent you here probably has home-based exercise programs for you as well. If not, uh, reach out to me, and we have these programs available as well. Then, in addition to the three Ts, we're going to add four more areas. I call these the seven daily essentials, or the daily seven essentials. Uh, so in addition to thoughts, toxins, and trauma, we're going to also now add water, make sure you're properly hydrated, sleep, breathing properly, and then living outside yourself. So let's start with water. How much water are you drinking? For the last 26 years as a chiropractor, this is one of the questions I ask almost every single day when someone comes in with some type of health problem, whether it's a headache, whether it's joint pain, whether it's a heart disease, whether it's high blood pressure, it doesn't matter. One of the first things that we've got to get in check is proper hydration. Most people, they say, well, yeah, I don't drink a lot of water, but I'm not thirsty. That's the wrong answer, okay? When you say, I'll drink something when I get thirsty, when you get thirsty is actually a red sign that you're already, a uh, red flag that you're already dehydrated. And dehydration has detrimental effects on our health. A study showed in um, 2003 that dehydration caused decreased performance ability even in highly trained athletes. So if you think highly trained athletes uh, have decreased performance uh, when they're dehydrated, what do you think it does to the average person? Absolutely. Uh, another study, evidence of impaired lymphocyte cytotoxicity, which means basically your, your cells are, are your, lympho, your lymphocytes, uh, which is part of your immune system to be able to flush stuff out of your body in, in order to uh, make, make sure that you're healthy, um, showed that that's, uh, that's a problem at an acidic pH. And so what, what acidic pH means is basically you're dehydrated, okay? Uh, for those of you familiar with if you've ever owned a pool, uh, what happens when the water gets acidic, you get all kinds of junk that grows in there, right? You get all, all kinds of bugs in there. You, get, you, get, um, you, you just get junk. You don't want to swim in it. And so the way to get rid of that is, for those of you who own a pool, you know this, you throw shock in it. You throw alkaline products into it. You, you, you throw an alkaline product into that to decrease the acidity as soon as you do that, what happens to those bugs? What happens to everything that's growing in the water? It dies off, it disappears. Same thing happens with our body. Okay, very, very important you're drinking your water. Now, experts tell us about half your body weight in ounces of water each day is ideal. But again, depending on your age, depending on your, your, your health right now, that might change. And so again, very important to get in touch with the chiropractor uh, that, that invited you here. Very important. Uh, we're going to talk about sleep next. Again, super important. Most people know this, uh, but how much sleep are you getting consistently? Right now, I'm finding a lot of my patients uh, with the stress levels increased due to coronavirus, they're not getting as much sleep as they should or as much sleep as, as they have been in the past. Sleep is vitally important for your, especially for your brain to heal and repair, but also for your body to heal and repair. In fact, a study in 2015 with over 150 people found that those who got less than seven hours of sleep were three times more likely to get sick. Three times more likely to get sick. And there's, there's many, many more studies other than just that one. So uh, very important that you get your sleep. Try to stay on a sleep schedule, especially right now if you're not working, you're not going to school, kids aren't going to school, you have a tendency to stay up late, sleep in in the next morning. Anytime your body changes a pattern, okay, it affects your health. It affects your immune system. So try to stay on the same sleep schedule. Wake up at the same times. Go to bed at the same times. Turn off the blue lights uh, about an hour before bed. So turn off your phones. Turn off your iPads. 
Uh, read a book that's encouraging. Read a book that's uplifting. Read a book that's, that's motivation, motivational instead of watching the news right before bed. Okay, very important. Now, if you're having problems sleeping, again, there are additional ways to help you sleep, and the chiropractor that invited you to this can help you with those. Okay, very important. We're going to move into to number six. We've got two left here, and then we're going to close this down. But uh, number six, proper breathing. Are you getting enough oxygen in your body, especially to your brain? So, you know, most people, they think, well, yeah, of course, I'm breathing properly. I'm, I'm alive, aren't I? Yeah, we need oxygen to, to, to live, obviously. But there's a difference between whether or not your brain is getting enough oxygen to thrive or you're just getting enough oxygen just to survive. Very, very big difference. So proper breathing creates a relaxation in your body that allows the healing part of your nervous system to work better, your, your, your parasympathetic nervous system, if you remember that discussion a few minutes ago. So let's just take, and again, there's multiple studies showing this. I like this one here, 2017, took 95 participants. They found that those who took six breaths per minute had a stronger immune system than those who took seven or more breaths per minute. And what they found was that the more breaths a person took per minute, the, the less, uh, their immune system functioned uh, less and less, okay? So again, if you want, you can, you, you can count the amount of breaths you take in a minute. Just count them. Just breathe normally and see how many you take. Because people that are stressed tend to take more breaths and they're more shallow, meaning less oxygen into the brain, uh, meaning less toxins are getting flushed out of the body through exhalation or through 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 exhaling. So very very important. One of the things you can do is start performing breathing exercises. And again, the chiropractor that sent you here can go over some of those with you. Uh, you can also set a timer on your phone. This is one thing that I tell patients to do. Uh, so it goes off every 20 to 30 minutes. And what it does just take a deep breath, hold it for a count of three or four seconds, and then slowly exhale. Okay, again, uh, we have programs available right now where we walk you through daily breathing exercises to make sure that you're breathing properly, to make sure there's reduced stress on your nervous system, allowing your immune system to function better. And one of the last things that we're going to go over, and then we're going to go over some, some testimonials. I'll share some stories with you, and then we'll, we'll have an offer for you at the end. Uh, living outside yourself. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, what, what does this even mean, right? Uh, it means, are you contributing to society? Are you making a difference? Do you feel like there's something bigger than just you? Are you taking the focus off just you? Okay. Spending time with other people, joining a community. Uh, this includes, obviously, we can't do this right now uh, in person, but social gatherings, being part of a larger community of like-minded people, uh, donating time or even money to help others and more. Just to give you, again, multiple studies out there, uh, there was one study published in, in Nature Communications uh, out of the University of Zurich, uh, told 50 people about receiving $100 over a few weeks. Half of the people were asked to spend that on themselves, and the other half was asked to spend it on someone else. And what they measured using brain MRIs, it showed those who agreed to spend money on other people had better brain function, especially in the areas of happiness, of health, of immune system strength, okay? Very, very important. So just start volunteering a certain amount of time each week. Now, obviously, right now, you can't do it probably in person, but you can maybe do something online. You can contact someone, check in with them, see how they're doing. Start donating money to a cause, which makes you feel good. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. It could be, you know, it could be just a couple dollars. Uh, join a church or a group that has the same values as you and makes you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself. All these are very, very important um, for, for not only your, your immune system strength, but for your overall health. And well-being. So there's many other ways to um, to improve your your nervous system strength, or, or not your nervous system strength, your immune system strength, and reduce the amount of stress on your nervous system. And the results are amazing. So I'm going to show you some of these results right now. Uh, we've got a couple here. Uh, we see over here on the left, uh, lady in the middle. Her name is Connie. Uh, when she first started seeing me, she had not only did she have irritable bowel syndrome, but she also had memory issues. She thought she was going to lose her job because she was losing her memory. 
Uh, she was depressed, and uh, we started working with her. Not only did all those get better, but her irritable bowel syndrome got better as well. How about Jamie over here? Jamie came in, when she first came in to see me, she had tears down her cheeks. Tears were running down her cheeks. I said, what's, what's going on, Jamie? She says, I was just diagnosed with diabetes. I said, well, I said, do you want to change it? She says, well, I can. I, I was told by my doctor that I can't change it. It's genetic. Uh, my father had it. My grandfather had it. And I, I, I have to be on medication the rest of my life. I said, well, that's not true, Jamie. We're, we can change that. And she said, okay. And so we started implementing these programs and these, these seven areas plus chiropractic adjustments. And no, now Jamie's no longer diabetic. She's off all her medication. How about Crohn's disease? For those of you familiar with Crohn's disease, uh, this is Kaylin. Uh, she was 21 years old when she first started seeing me. She had severe Crohn's disease. Uh, for those of you familiar with that, that's, that's a disease of the intestines. Basically, you're looking at a lifetime of, of medications, of pain, of regular probably surgeries. At some point, probably removing part of your intestines. Um, and it's just not a, a great life. It's, it's not a, a way that anyone should have to live. We started working with her. And you can see her picture on the right there now. Okay, within, within probably three to four months, her Crohn's disease, her doctor was doing regular blood tests on her. And probably by the third month, her doctor says, we've got to redo this blood test. Something's not right. Uh, redid another blood test. And he came back and he said, your, your Crohn's disease is in remission. Like, I, I, I've never seen this. Okay. And so now she's, uh, as you can see, she's, fit, she's a fitness, she's in a fitness and, um, you know, don't know where she would be if, if it wasn't for changing her lifestyle like that, right? Uh, how about kids? You can see the Wolf Sisters down here. Uh, they started with me when they were young, probably three or four years old. Mom brought them in because they were getting regular ear infections. One of them, they thought they were going to have to put uh, tubes in her ears. The other one uh, was starting to lose her hearing because her ear infections were so bad. Her teachers started telling her mom, listen, she might need to get hearing aids. Okay, because her ear infections were so bad, started working with us, making these changes. No more ear infections. How about Tina? Now, this, this beautiful woman, I can call her a beautiful woman because she's my wife, but she used to get regular bouts of strep throat. Strep throat every single year. And when we started this, this lifestyle with her, uh, her strep throat, her strep throat uh, st stopped happening. She stopped getting strep throat all the time. Um, how about psoriasis? Okay, this is Dave. Dave comes in to me one day and he says, Doc, he says, you're not going to believe this. He says, I can see my kneecap for the first time in 10 years. His psoriasis was so bad that he couldn't even see his kneecap. And after, after implementing these procedures and, the, and these, these steps, the psoriasis started to improve so much that he was able to see his kneecap. And you can see here this, this lady on the, on the uh, right 79 years old, uh, the lady in the middle, her name is Alice. She was coming in, she, had, she was on two medications for high blood pressure. After implementing these steps, she was able to get off her high blood pressure. Now I didn't take her off, her medical doctor took her off these medications, but it improved so much that when she was still on her medications, her, her, her blood pressure actually got too low. And so I had to send her back to her medical doctor so her medical doctor could, could take her off her meds. So, so her, her blood pressure would be normal. So the next step, I'm, I'm going to ask you again. I asked you at the start uh, to just ask yourself at the end of this, if this makes sense to you. Okay. If, if all this makes sense to you, and if it does, then I would like to offer you something. But again, if it doesn't make sense to you and you think, no, medication is the answer for me, that's fine. It's all good. But again, researchers, experts in health and wellness, uh, genetics experts tell us again and again and again that 90 to 95% of all chronic disease processes can be reversed with lifestyle changes. So if you'd like to take me up on my offer, what I'd like to do is offer you a free uh, online consultation and assessment. Again, this is all virtual. You don't have to come to the office. Uh, if a doctor has, has invited you here, then they have the opportunity to do this as well with you. I'd recommend you contact them. Uh, the way this works is you basically set up an appointment uh, for a free consult. We'll have you fill out some paperwork. We'll email you some paperwork. You'll fill it out, email it back to us, and then we'll get on a call just like this. We'll have video, uh, video screens, very easy to do. And uh, 
and we'll go over everything. Uh, if we feel like we can help you, we'll move on to an assessment that we'll do online, uh, basically an examination online that we can do virtually. And then once that examination is done, what we'll do is we'll put everything together. We'll computerize the results, and then we'll set up another time for you to get it, what, what's called a complete report of findings. At that point, we will tell you whether or not we think we can help you. If so, if we feel that we can help you, we will tell you what type of care plan that we need to to use with you, the length of that care plan, plus uh, we'll share the, the costs associated with that plan at that point. And then you can decide, yes, I wanna proceed or no, this isn't for me. So I'm gonna ask that you reach out to the doctor who uh, invited you here, who sent you this uh, presentation uh, for a time to schedule. What we'll do is we'll send you out uh, what's called a Calendly link. Uh, you basically click a link, our schedule will pop up, you hit the date, and some times will come up. When those times come up, you choose which time you want and you put your name and, and email address in there and cell phone number. And then um, about uh, 24 hours before you'll get a reminder and then about an hour before you get another reminder uh, so you can get on the call along with uh, the link to get on a virtual call like this. So uh, hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you. If, if I have any questions, let me open this up. I'm gonna stop share. Uh, if I have any questions uh, from anybody, I'm happy uh, to take those now. If not, I will end this and uh, I will, uh, again, recommend that uh, you, you get in touch with the chiropractor who sent you here. If it was me, uh, reach out to me. Probably you're on, on uh, Facebook. Uh, you're, you're friends with me on Facebook. Send me a message. Uh, I'm happy to send you my calendar link so we can get you on a program to help you reduce the amount of stress on your nervous system and also improve your immune system strength, which is super important right now. Any questions? Awesome. Well, I don't see any questions. So thank you so much for uh, tuning in. If you found this valuable, uh, please, we're going to be hosting more of these in the future. Please invite friends, family members, anyone that you think does not know this information that needs this information. We'd love to, to present this to them and, and uh, be able to help them as well through this, uh, through this difficult time right now. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night.